I'm I'm gonna have a bad girl phase. I would love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> like the post Disney phase, you know, where they all say I'm bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> all right so hello and welcome back to the red shutter well it's not welcome back it's welcome to the welcome red shutter to. show I've never been yes before, so. and it's our first show yes it thank is thank you for having me of course Thanks, ellie the the incomparable ellie burke hello the very green ellie burke <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i didn't even i didn't even plan this out but you know it works it so. works it really does it goes with the aesthetic all right ali uh so would you be able to tell us a little bit about yourself yes um so my name is ellie burke i am a musician from liverpool anfield and i am a full-time musician at the minute i'm releasing music gigging cover gigs original music gigs and i'm just trying to live as a recording artist at the minute making money as well so it's all good <laughs> making money doing what you love yeah always exactly. good, always good. Exactly. um so how long have you been doing this uh, doing music professionally i guess professionally about two years maybe but i've been a musician all my life since i was about 13 can't remember learning guitar it just can't it just kind of happened naturally so it's, it's just always been with me i always wanted to be a singer when I was like five, I'd watch Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, and be like, I want to be like Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato. So it's just kind of always been there. That's you know? I feel like that's all of our childhood. It's, it is. It's, it's, it's literally all of us, isn't it? That's like what we're all inspired from. I can't tell you how many years I went as Hannah Montana for Halloween. Oh, I think it was don't. three. Anytime there was like a dress up day in school, I'd be like, I'm Hannah Montana. I think I had about four Hannah Montana wigs. <laughs> you didn't need a wig. I didn't actually have a wig, but I used to just like clip it back the way she used to have it and get like, you know, jeans, a little jacket and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah All it. the sparkles. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So you've been working as like a professional musician for yeah. one to two years. What we're really looking to delve into on this show is... Uh, brand image and how to just find success in the community and I think an important thing to start that off is what even defines success because I feel like our our image of it is so overblown like you're successful if you're Billie Eilish yeah exactly but no not necessarily I think success in the music industry is you've got to be enjoying what you're doing that's success to me if you're not enjoying it there's no point in doing it because you're just going to be miserable. So you've got to be happy and enjoy what you're doing. And then if you are making money and you're making a living out of it, which is very important, then I'd say that's successful. You don't have to be a millionaire or be as famous as, like you say, Billie Eilish. I think success is whatever you think success is for you. I think making a comfortable living and being happy what you're doing is mm-hmm. successful. In any type of job as well, not just music, but in any type of job. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have fun with what I do. And I'm sure every musician in the city does. So I'd say that's successful. All right. And uh, now uh, within the music community, how difficult do you think it is to find that consistent, livable kind of wage from it? I think, mm, well, personally, it was hard for me to be consistent a few years ago because of like I suffered with anxiety a lot. So performing live was really scary to me. Even though I'd done it before, it was like really scary to me. I'd have to like beg my partner to come to an open mic with me. Just, I don't know, like I loved music, but I was just really anxious. So I think sometimes like anxiety or mental health can get in the way of um, doing this type of job. But that was for me personally. And I think it's hard to say because it's different for everyone mm-hmm. what's like what's difficult um but i think i don't know <laughs> well fair enough it is it is really entrepreneurship so you yeah. really have to like kick yourself in the gear kick yourself exactly. in the ass yeah. to get going you've got to have a lot of like um determination mm. which comes management. back to that loving what you do exactly yeah. yeah if you love what you do you're going to be determined to do yeah. it 
you've got to have good management like you've got to be your own manager Mm -hmm. so i think it's okay i think it's hard to be an independent musician because you've got to manage everything yourself Mm -hmm. from recording gigs finances um you know writing everything in a diary and making sure you turn up to everything i think Mm -hmm. it's hard without a manager Mm -hmm. but it is possible as well so that is a hard side to be an independent musician but once you get into routine, a consistent routine, it becomes a lot easier. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier now than it was like a year ago. God. Yeah. I was so overwhelmed in the past, but it gets easier mm-hmm. the more you do it. Now, what were some of the uh, shortfalls you made along the way? Some of the things that you had to learn from? <sighs> I'd say the anxiety. You know, you've just got to push yourself to do it. Mm-hmm. No matter how you feel, no matter how scared you are. No matter what people think of yeah, you, you've just got to push through it. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I did. And I'm sure a lot of other people have done. So push through your fears, your anxieties. Be consistent. So every day just wake up and say, what can I do today that will contribute towards this, you know, this career that I want? Mm-hmm. Determination, good personal management, um, be an entrepreneur. It's, it's hard, you know, it's hard to mm-hmm. like, to figure everything out because, being your own manager, it's a difficult one. Mm-hmm. Now, on the more like business-minded things, yeah. what are some of the surprising things that have come up on this journey for you? Like, what have you had to deal with that you just had no idea would even be something you had to think about? I think like busking. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's always a difficult one. I love busking because it's great for confidence. It's great to you interact with a lot of people a lot of like-minded musicians but I think what's hard about that is you do get a lot of like hecklers oh yeah yeah you get a lot of people who just don't understand what you're doing and try to get in your personal space and annoy you no genuinely people try to annoy you and stuff like that so you deal with a lot you deal with a lot of difficult people you see I've only seen hecklers with like uh the street preachers because I've seen that I've never seen hecklers go up to the musicians is it really that bad it's not that bad, but, you know, I'd say, like, most bus concessions I do, there's o- there's always someone who is, like, heckling or, you know, oh, fair enough. getting... When I say getting... I'm not trying to be rude when I say in the personal space, but you have, like, a space where you want to perform and do yeah. your job, and sometimes people are just, like, on top of you yeah. and stuff like that. Personal bubble. Yeah, it does a personal bubble. I've spoke about this on videos before because it is, it, it is an issue, you know what I mean, but... Other than that, busking is really fun and it's great for confidence. And I do think that that's developed my career, my Mm -hmm. brand and my personal confidence over the years. But I'd say that's a difficult one. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) you're saying that it helped you develop your personal brand. Let's shift, shift a bit more to those sort of topics. So uh, what have you done to, uh, what else have you done to develop your personal brand? Um open mics um i i do think about i I think about this a lot like the way i dress because i think Mm -hmm. that's important as well in your brand like the colors you wear what type of clothes you wear you know because some people love like the 60s vibes Mm -hmm. some people are like 50s 80s uh, you know it changes so i definitely think about that and when i go to like open mics not so much when i'm busking Mm -hmm. i'm a bit bit more casual busking's your day job yeah it's just like casual but if i go to open mics i do try to switch it up a bit but i've got like <laughs> i haven't got many clothes it's <laughs> the same stuff all the time so i just try and switch it up a bit and um, but today i didn't even mean to do this but it's actually it goes together with like a brand it does because it does. the green guitar is so ingrained in your brand image yes. before i knew you i was like oh there's there's the girl with the green guitar oh look at, ooh, <laughs> look at that green fender like everybody gets so excited when you pull know, it out of the gate bag like, oh, look at that. i think I've got a bit like an earthy vibe because me other guitar, me Martin is like brown. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like wood. Mm-hmm. So what I a hippie! Definitely ch- You're so granola. I know, I'm so <laughs> granola. I'm so like earthy. I'm gr- so <laughs> granola. <laughs> it actually does look like granola. It's like that type of color. <laughs> but <laughs> no, but like yeah, you know, I think I do specifically. Um, pick the guitars to match my brand mm-hmm. um, and then the clothes are wear, the music are right. I try to have a certain message behind that 
Mm-hmm. Um, your well, brand image ellie and i were talking about this last night we have another ellie behind the scenes yes. it's i'm surrounded by ellie's yeah. ellie squared <laughs> <laughs> so many ellie's um you can never have too many ellie's no. um but we were talking about last night i know that was so cringy <laughs> go on girl say it say it You can fuck right off with that. <laughs> um, but we were talking about last night that part of your brand image is just like, you're so wholesome. <laughs> like me. Because uh, oh. last uh, last night, Ellie was uh, the opening act uh, for uh, someone at the Jacaranda last night. And um, uh, it was just so sweet. You'd go up and be like, ah, so this song is about this and just like <laughs> needs in a bit of space and it's me new single. <laughs> so and you're up there honest. in your little like pastel rainbow cardigan <laughs> and it's just, it's so sweet and wholesome. Oh like, my God. Maybe that is my brand then. Yeah. I think that's that's my personality, I think. It is. Um, and I can't help it. Just just comes out. You're just so wholesome. <laughs> But it really is, it's very different from a lot of uh, female artists. Do you think so? In town, yeah. Oh, wow. I don't think many go for the wholesome, or if they do, it goes to, like, a very, like, um, a young place. But with yeah. you, that's not really what it is. Well, I do want to come across as mature. I don't really want to <coughs> come off as, like, childish or anything. No. So. Yeah. I, you know. Yeah. I don't know, I just... I think, like, I don't think I've, like, purposely made a brand. I think it's just matched with my personality. But I do love, like, the earthy vibes yeah. and writing songs about space and nature. It's mm-hmm. No cringy things, but <laughs> it's just, you know. Well, even, um, I think that, to an extent, talking about your anxiety and stuff, yeah. that uh, it sometimes is, is hard to let your personality shine through. Yeah when you're on a stage because yeah. you're just in fight or flight yeah and so nervous about everything that's going everything on that, that you can't just be yourself yeah. so to be at that point where your brand image is literally just your personality yeah. is really cool I, I know it's like i haven't even done it on purpose it's yeah. just happened yeah which it's that's really actually a big oh oh yes it's oh. it's authentic <laughs> <laughs> it, it all goes together I yeah yeah oh thank you (laughs) roll credits this is we've really come full circle from our conversation last night (laughs) um but actually that's another thing that i'm really looking at uh researching because i feel like in the music community a lot of people don't look at it as as much of a business as it really is and because of that i think a lot of people develop these brand images without realizing they're developing a brand image yeah because it does it the music does become a part of your personality yeah so you don't even realize you're doing it but like you say anything that you buy or like online like a brand you know like nike or anything like that adidas it's got a brand image and you 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 notice that you you remember like Mm -hmm. the images or the name and that's what you've got to be as a musician you are a business so you've got to treat yourself like that yeah even though it is hard yeah definitely um now something that i have heard from a few musicians is this idea that if i do covers i'm gonna be known as a cover artist Mm -hmm. do you feel that at all do you have any comments on that not i wouldn't say if you do covers that you're just known as that just it depends if you are releasing music yourself as well yeah. because a lot of us do cover um gigs t- it's it's a way of income yeah. isn't it so i wouldn't say that i i don't look at anyone and think oh they're just a cover artist mm-hmm. i've never actually thought that about a musician yeah. because i do it myself i sing uh-huh. covers but i think if you release some music and you do that's what you want to do then you will be- become known as that if you push that brand yeah um no, I don't think I, I personally. I don't look at musicians and think, oh, they're mm-hmm. just cover artists. Never, because yeah. it's a thing that I've heard. Honestly, I've heard it from a lot of men in yeah. the community. Yeah. <laughs> just, saying. Uh, <laughs> just saying, Gail. 
So I, we we really need to come up with like a little badge to put whenever I go into my Scouse accent. Just be like, fuck it, Scouse, oh, Shannon, yeah. see you, Gail. Put, put the words on the screen. Oh, as well. yes, Gail. Yeah, yes, Gail. We'll put a translator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need actually yeah. some oh titles. My God. Literally. <laughs> well, I'll just stay behind the microphone. <laughs> um, uh, but let's see. What else? What else? What else? What if someone said that to you? Like, where do you think somebody that they've met is just like a cover, cover singer? It's more, um, I've heard people say like oh you know i don't like doing the cover gigs i wish people wouldn't come to my cover gigs i don't want to be known as a cover artist yeah and it's just it was a really interesting thing to hear because i was curious about what your thoughts were as someone who you are a full-time musician these people were people who wanted to be full-time musicians yeah but were turning down those cover gigs that would allow them to be you shouldn't i don't think you should ever turn that down i mean look at miley cyrus she went through a whole phase where she was just singing covers. Oh, that's right. You know, and she, I never, I know she already was an original artist, but I never looked at it and thought, oh, she's just a cover singer now. I just enjoyed the music. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should turn down gigs because you don't want to be a cover artist. Yeah. I don't, I just think you need to balance it out. Like, you know, if you really want to release your own music, you need these cover gigs to pay for that. Yeah. So I think it all, it's all really important and all mm -hmm. works together. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's good for confidence as well. It's a good way to practice. Mm -hmm. You know, you're singing, your guitar playing, and all all of that coming together. I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah, because I mean, with all of it, it's it's you know, your voice is just kind of a muscle, and the yeah. more you use it, the better you get at it. Exactly. Um, and uh, you can also bring a bit of your own brand and your own style to the covers you do. Yes. You know, you're toxic by Britney Spears. Mm -hmm is not britney spears it's, <laughs> it's well, very ellie burke know, it's exactly. still toxic and the girls are still out in the audience i know and people love baby one more time you know people love that i cover but <coughs> yeah just make it your own as well mm -hmm. and some on the occasion i do sing like one of my own songs at an original gig yeah. you know if you are worried about that just add one of your own songs in there yeah. and just say this is an original you know yeah. just make sure you're being yourself yeah and Plus, it's still it's still getting your name out there. It is. Yeah. It is. It's it's. I think cover gigs are great. I enjoy mm -hmm. them. Yeah, I f I was talking to um, uh, Wayne of really who has been going to the Monday Club. He's a busker down in London. Okay. <coughs> and he was talking about how the open mic scene has changed over the past like 10 to 15 years and how it used to be like only original music yeah but now so many people go out and do covers yeah which is kind of interesting i know how has it changed like that how has that even happened yeah i don't know i don't know if it has something to do with the new generation i don't know if it has something to do with maybe everybody in covid yeah learned just guitar learning and wants to play green day because same Covid has um, changed everything, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 I agree with that. Yeah. We love them, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we love to make them our own. Yeah. Well, I to be to be fair, I mean, um, my uncle told me when I first uh, started to play guitar and learn how to sing and all this stuff, um, he was the showman of the family. We had a family full of musicians, but he was yeah. the golden child, the showman. And he said that people don't know if you can sing until you sing a song that they know. Exactly. Exactly. So unless you have your marketing strategy where you play the moon constantly on your Instagram and now it is stuck in my head 24-7, yeah. Ellie could tell you that I got home and I was singing it last night. <laughs> it does get, you know what? It does get stuck in your head. It does. It does. I just, I mean, I try to write songs that are catchy mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm. It's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Now, COVID's, COVID's an interesting thing to talk about. Yes. With the music scene. Yes. I don't know what to ask, though. <laughs> well, um, I think, to be honest, during, like, I didn't ever do, like, a paid gig before COVID. Everything kind of happened for me after COVID. Fair enough. Um, so I think COVID was maybe a good time to reflect on a lot of things in life reflect on music, 
reflect you know everybody reflected on what their life was like what they want for the future um it was a terrible time but i suppose some people thought it was a good time and um, to have that time to yourself you know but I, I don't know. Has it changed the music scene, do you think, COVID? I don't... I don't know. I wasn't in it before uh, COVID either. That's what I mean. Like, I, I, was, I wasn't in the local music scene, mm-hmm. so I, I can't really say. Even though as a musician, I wasn't in, like, this local Liverpool music scene. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know all the musicians that I know now, so I don't know how it's changed. Yeah. Yes. I would say that um, it got better because actually the moon was a song I wrote in lockdown. I wrote a lot of like songs in lockdown, and the moon was like so during COVID, everyone was overwhelmed with life, and I was like, oh, what if we could find a place to like get some peace and a bit of relaxation? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I looked that cringy, but I was like, I love space and I'd love to go to the moon, or you know. <laughs> she keeps saying it's cringy. It, it is, is a great cringy. song. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, but I just thought, oh, I'd love to just fly around space or go to the moon. On the cringe topic, you know what I realized the other day? <laughs> <laughs> I have been like so quiet about opening this podcast and doing this kind of thing because I'm like, oh, that's going to be so cringy. But then I realized. It's not that I think what I'm doing is cringy. Yeah. It's that I just think that I am cringy. Uh, so. No. <laughs> You're not, though. <laughs> but I think that about myself yeah. as well. Like, I, when I'm talking on stage, I'm like, oh, do I sound like... It's like just... It we do sound so cringy. We just think we are the cringiest of cringe. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, but what it's it is. not, is it? From others' perspective, it's it's not cringy. It's yeah. just we're just thinking about ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> that's the anxiety yeah that's the anxiety it's like oh, what oh my people god think of me? that makes me feel better that i'm not alone <laughs> you're not alone you're not alone but that's what i mean when i talk about what my songs are about i'm like oh is it are people thinking oh that's so cheesy. no we're in the audience thinking oh she's so sweet <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm gonna have a bad girl face i would love to see that <laughs> <laughs> like the post Disney phase, you know, where they all say I'm bad <laughs> 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 I've, yeah, got some, I've got some hair dye. <laughs> and, uh, I'll just be completely different. <laughs> Start <with Lee. laughs> What did Ali say the other day? Ali shaved his head and I saw him on Sunday. And the first thing he said to me before hi was, yes, I had my Britney moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be me. <laughs> no. oh my God. I don't know where I'm going to go from here, but just winging it. Just going with the flow. It's kind of a nice place to be, though. Yeah. Because you've definitely got the opportunities. You oh know, yeah, you're doing like, well. I also, I'll make a point. I think that releasing music is such a great way to get so many different opportunities. Mm-hmm. Like, people notice you a lot more, people respect you. You become more established within the music scene. So, and you know, if you promote it as well, you get like radio plays, radio interviews, podcasts, Mm -hmm. and people just take you more serious. Well, you're also very good at hopping on those opportunities and finding those opportunities. What do you attribute that to? Because I know a lot of musicians who've been in the community for a lot longer who haven't done half of the things that you've done really? you're you're on other podcasts cheating on me oh and, sorry and ellie <laughs> you know oh, sorry it's my favorite one you're you're on the bbc radio thing you're you do a lot i just i just message people you know yeah. i just feel like i know people so you're the one that's initiating that Mo- i say most of the time um my boyfriend actually took over my twitter and he was helping me out with like marketing and stuff Mm because he's a marketer so he took over my twitter and um because like i i I use social media all the time but i always forget about twitter which is bad because it's such a it's such a great community especially like for music Mm -hmm. so he was just he just followed people message people um and then like share loads of posts and then some people would message me so i think it was a bit of both oh i'd spend time messaging using submit hub to get on like playlists um and also i've got i know 
there's a singer, a band called Joe Symes and the Love and Kind. And Joe Symes used to teach me and like my band that I was in. So he's helped me with some opportunities as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just about sometimes it's who you know, sometimes it's you just being annoying and messaging people, mm-hmm. or sometimes people approach you. It's just yeah. it's a mixture of everything. So I always feel bad to like reach out again and pester them, yeah. even though anyone that I've spoken to that like runs and manages a bar or something, because that's most of the messages that I'm doing now is like, yeah. why didn't you text me again? Like yeah. I just, I genuinely forgot. Sometimes you just have to say like, oh, I'm just, can I just follow up this last message? Yeah. But no, I get that. I, I feel annoying sometimes about messaging people. So is that your advice to everybody? Just pester everybody, be annoying? Yeah. Yeah, you've just got to force your way in sometimes. Yeah. Not like overdo it, but you know what? If you just need to follow up a message, just mm-hmm. just do it. Because I feel like that. I'm like, oh, I don't want to message again. But sometimes you just have to. Yeah. Plus, who would be annoyed by you? Oh, well, who I'm would? sure people could be annoyed by me. <laughs> I can be annoying oh, if I really want to. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see that. I'll hold you to that. Oh, yeah. I well, I'll get to the annoying side of Ellie yeah. Burke at one of these point, days. At some point in life. all right well thank you so much for joining us do you want to move on to our little uh, couch concert thank you yes sure all right what are you going to be playing for us today i'm going to play a love song called together oh because that's going to be my next single so yeah very excited yes whatever you're ready
Thank you so much, Ellie. That was lovely. Oh, uh, thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course. Please come back anytime, my dear. Invite me anytime and I'll be back. Don't you worry. <laughs> Before you cheat on us with another oh, podcast. Well, oh, <laughs> this is my favorite. <laughs> this is the only one. <laughs> the Red Shutter Club. Yes, you heard so it here, folks. The Red Shutter Club. Red Ellie Shutter. Burke's favorite. It so is. now you have to tune in. It's amazing. <laughs>